in the old days, when I would get on the trainer, I'd set up my rollers inside the hallway and ride until my mind was numb. Today, a lot of things have changed. Let's take a look inside my indoor training setup. Now, I'll be the first to admit I am by no means an esports athlete. What I am is limited on my time during the day, and with only a few minutes of daylight left in these winter months, it's really hard for me to get out and train, not to mention the dangers of it all. Even with the great SoCal weather, there are some benefits to some indoor riding. So with the help of Wahoo, along with a Zwift membership, I'm able to put together a plan, but I had to build the setup first. <music> I got the latest Wahoo kicker and when it comes right out of the box, it has an 11 speed cassette along with a quick release skewer. That wasn't going to work for me because I'm running 12 speed SRAM along with a through axle. An easy workaround for this is to basically take your existing default cassette, take it off the trainer and then get yourself a 12 speed. I went with a SRAM rival. It's just a cheap one and I know it's going to last a while. Once you go ahead and remove that cassette, you're going to need to take it completely off and then either sell it or toss it to the side. After you do that, you need to remove the free hub body itself because it's not compatible with 12 speed. I went ahead and I ordered one, an XD 12 speed driver. And then once you get it, you can install it into the trainer, but you have to do a couple of things first. Once you get it, make sure that it has plenty of grease on it. Fun hack is I always take a Q-tip and make sure I thoroughly coat it before installing a new part in. Once it's coated, I take that and make sure it fits squarely inside the trainer. Once it's in the trainer, I always give it a nice spin to make sure it sounds smooth and it's in there securely. Once it's in, you go ahead and put the cassette on there and then take the spacer that's appropriate for your through axle and put that in as well. Once your through axle's in, you tighten it up pretty tight. Make sure you move your skewer on the outside so your rear heel doesn't hit it. And then I have Bluetooth on my phone. You send any updates to your phone while installing the Wahoo. You're good to go. With the trainer set up mostly complete, I then needed to figure out what program to use and Zwift became the natural option. I picked it for a couple of different reasons. First, it has a ton of people using that program where you can pretty much find anybody 24 hours a day. Second, it has a wide variety of different training programs you can use as well as individual workouts. For me, I like to do things long term and therefore I decided to go with a training plan. And then when I picked it, it pretty much loads up every time you boot up the app. That way, every time you ride, you know exactly what's coming. I run Zwift through my MacBook Pro, but I wanna be able to watch my workouts on the wall-mounted TV. You use a simple HDMI cable along with an Ant Plus dongle. That Ant Plus is going to be able to read the metrics from the trainer to Zwift. That includes your cadence, your wattage, and your heart rate. Once the TV's turned on, it should be able to mirror everything from your computer. Once the bike is set up, you then pick your workout or your ride, and then you're ready to go. It is essential that you use a fan during your workouts. It gets hot. I use a spacer underneath my front tire. I found this one at Home Depot. It keeps things level. Not to mention, don't forget for your rear brake, if you're running disc brakes, you want to run some sort of shim in there to prevent the pistons from falling out in case you reach and grab your brakes. It does happen from time to time.
My Wahoo kicker comes with some adjustable spacers to make sure that the rear of the bike is level. I even have it on some rubber mats to make sure that when I'm standing, I can rock a little bit back and forth. It tends to help and I can really feel the difference. When it's all set up, don't forget to take a favorite towel and drape it over the bike. The last thing you need is sweat across your top tube and you're ready to go. So far, this is a great setup that works for me, but I know that everybody's setup is different. What works for you and how long have you been doing it? What do you use that works that maybe not everyone does? Let us know below in the comments. And until next time, stay Velo-worthy.